Turquoise as a stone has been valued across the world for thousands of years. The oldest mines that we know about are probably in the Middle East, perhaps in Egypt, in the Sinai. There are also very old mines in Iran, uh, what's called Persian turquoise. And the oldest turquoise jewelry that I know about is from the first dynasty in Egypt, which is about 5,000 years ago. Europeans got to know about turquoise through Iranian mines, Persian mines. And our name for turquoise actually comes from their conception of where turquoise came from. They believed that turquoise was from Turkey. And archaic French for Turkish stone is turquoise, turquoise. And the kind of stone that they were getting was this. This is a Persian cabochon in a Navajo made ring, a ring made by an artist called Aljo. And you can see that the color on this ring is a pale robin's egg blue. It has no matrix, no veining in the stone. And this was the ideal Persian stone. This was what the Europeans were really eager to buy. This shade of turquoise is just one of many. Turquoise comes from white to blue. This is from a mine called Blue Gem, which is in uh, Nevada. And green. So here is a beautiful stone, a, a very large cabochon that is from a mine that is local to this area, a mining district called Cerrillos. And all the way to almost black blue, very, very dark blue, sometimes with black webbing, spider webbing, with little bright points of blue in it. Turquoise in this region stands for water, but turquoise, poetically enough, only forms in regions where water is scarce. So turquoise is formed as water runs through cracks in the rock. And you can see that very clearly here, where we have just this layer of turquoise where the rock was cracked. And as the water seeped in, it picked up copper and aluminum and iron and other elements from the surrounding areas and deposited them into this crack. This also tells you why large nodules of turquoise are so rare and so valuable, because you only get turquoise forming high in the ground because the water doesn't flow all that far down. And it only flows where there are channels for it to flow into. Usually, you're going to get a very thin layer of turquoise, the thin vein of it like this. When you look at a ring like this, that's actually a pretty thin piece of turquoise. And sometimes, actually very often, they're made to look a little higher by putting a layer of cardboard or something like that underneath them. Turquoise is also a relatively soft stone. And you can see this here. This is something I really love. This is a necklace that is almost certainly made from our local Cerrillos turquoise. And it's a necklace that was probably made at Santo Domingo Pueblo. It's a technique called hishi, where rough beads are formed, they're drilled, they're put on a string, and then they're ground down together. So the, you get this wonderful continuous sinuous line of them. This was a piece that was loved and worn often. And you can see that because around the neck, the stone has darkened much more significantly. And you can see that if I put these two pieces together and compare them. Although some might look at this piece and say, no, it's, it's a piece that has been damaged by wear. I don't see that. This is one of my favorite pieces. And it's one of my favorite pieces because it's a living piece. It's a piece that has had a life and continues to have a life. And we see that 
in the fact that the stone changed color because it was worn and loved so much.